Additive manufacturing is a different way of making parts, building them up layer by layer versus the alternatives of cutting them from solid stock or forming them with a mold or dye. It's a different approach to part production, but is it also a form of automation? I would argue yes. Additive manufacturing, or specifically 3D printing, can take many different process steps, multiple cutting operations, a long assembly process, welding, brazing, and effectively consolidate those steps into just one cycle in the 3D printer. One cycle that can run fully unattended, overnight, over the weekend, or during the workday, while the technician goes and does something else. They don't have to worry about the specifics of this process because the 3D printer has it covered. This is not just a different way of thinking about one piece of machinery and a company's capacity. Implementing a 3D printer can bring benefits to the shop floor similar to those provided by a cobot or other more typical automation. It can help employees' skills go farther and help a manufacturer augment its workforce. I recently saw how this plays out at a plastic specialist in Minnesota called General Pattern. The company, founded in 1922, began as a pattern-making business to support foundries. But when casting work began moving overseas in the 1970s, the company took the skill sets it had acquired in pattern-making and pivoted into the related field of model-making, this time for the toy industry. That work eventually led to injection molding of toys and other end-use plastic parts, often on a very short timeline. Keeping up with the pace of product development and production meant that General Pattern also needed to build its own mold tooling. The company invested heavily in CNC machining equipment for tool making in order to deliver injection molded parts in a matter of weeks. Today, the company runs 85 injection molding presses across multiple facilities in Blaine, Minnesota. And all of those presses are using mold tooling, also made in Blaine, mostly on the company's 62 CNC milling centers. Mostly, but not all, because some of General Pattern's mold inserts are now made via 3D printing. The company now has a metal 3D printer, one from Mantle 3D, that prints mold inserts from metal paste. The components that come out of the printer are soft and malleable, known as green parts, but are sintered in an oven to become solid, dense, and ready to go into an injection mold tool. 3D printing is just one of more than a dozen ways that General Pattern makes mold tooling these days but it's an important option because it's the company's most automated way to produce these necessary tools. When mold tooling is made through machining, solid blocks of aluminum or tool steel are cut down to the right size and shape in a process that can require many different setups, moments where an operator needs to reach into the machine and position the workpiece for its next cut. A complicated tool can require many such setups, as well as moving between different machines. The 3D printer is different, Molds are designed with CAD software, just as they would be for machining, but then are sliced and sent to the 3D printer, which can build complicated geometries completely unattended. Operators can get a complex tool out of the machine without being directly involved. General Pattern, like many molders and mold makers, is facing a labor shortage. 10% of its workforce is tool makers, which are highly skilled professionals. But most are nearing retirement, and this trend is mirrored across the manufacturing industry broadly. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2024, more than one quarter of the current durable goods manufacturing workforce is 55 or older. 6% are over the age of 65. As those workers retire, there will not be enough incoming toolmakers or machinists or programmers or fabricators to fill the void that they'll leave behind. For general pattern, this is where the 3D printer comes in. When I spoke to Denny Ryland, third generation owner and CEO about this, he said that the 3D printer was a way to get more throughput, a tool to enable these skilled technicians to do more with their skills. At General Pattern, 3D printing is not a replacement for mold making expertise, but it is a form of automation that lets expert mold makers essentially be in two places at once. A mold maker can design a detailed insert and send it to the printer for manufacturing, and in the meantime, turn their attention to making the rest of the mold. General Pattern is not the only company coming to rely on additive manufacturing for production that doesn't need constant attention. In Alabama, medical device manufacturer Curativa manufactures implants from Peak, polyether ether ketone, using a filament-based 3D printing process as well as traditional CNC machining. On any given day, you'll find individual operators tending over three or four CNC milling or turning machines. But meanwhile, inside a clean room on the company's shop floor, one employee is responsible for 10 3D printers. Curativa Vice President of Emerging Technology Todd Reith told me, the operator to machine ratio favors the AM process. 
It's mostly hands-off and requires less machine input from the techs. Across other manufacturing sectors, we routinely see additive manufacturing facilities where fewer employees are needed overall because of the hands-off nature of this process. It can feel almost eerie to visit some of the largest 3D printing users in the United States for the simple fact of how few people you are likely to see on the production floor at a place like Centavia, Vulcan Forms, Norse Titanium. Staggered starts and often longer cycles on 3D printers make it possible for one person to tend multiple machines at once, producing if not more per shift, then more complete parts with every run. That completeness also points to another way that additive manufacturing is automation, with the reduction of assembly. We often talk about assembly consolidation, those places where AM makes it possible to take what used to be 10, 20, hundreds of parts and build them together as just one. But another way to describe assembly consolidation might be assembly automation. Locomotive manufacturer Wabtec has seen this in converting a line of brake panels for light rail over to AM. What used to be six different parts tediously brazed together is now 3D printed as just one piece through laser powder bed fusion. These are tall, narrow parts, so each build of eight takes about 100 hours, but that's 100 hours that engineers can spend focused on something else, like post-processing the previous batch of panels or developing new AM applications. Energy technology company Baker Hughes has a similar story. One of its trim products for industrial valves used to take nine months to produce because all the components were being made, shipped, and assembled by external suppliers. When the company converted this trim for additive manufacturing, taking what used to be a welded stack of machined plates and turning it into one 3D printed metal part, it eliminated not only the assembly process, but also that long supply chain. Arguably, making one of these trims is now more work because the production now happens internally, but it is a far faster production process. The printed parts require only minimal machining and post-processing with none of that finicky joining. 3D printing automates the assembly by effectively removing it from the workflow. So additive manufacturing is not a perfect solution for companies facing labor shortages or seeking to increase their throughput. It introduces its own requirements and complexities, and without careful planning, time saved in 3D printing could be lost in manual post-processing or other steps. But for General Pattern and other manufacturers like them, 3D printing is increasingly becoming a form of automation they can lean on.